Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Kindle Bay Church's vlog again today. Um, continuing to look at Reading Between the Lines by Glenn Scrivener. Uh, we're on day 103 and today we uh, our thought is based on Mark 13, 1 to 37. And today's chapter is called Wars and Rumours of Wars. So I'll just read the chapter out and then just um, just add my, my short thought on the end. Whatever dominates the skyline of a city tells you what they worship. Traditionally, cities have been dominated by cathedrals, mosques and temples. Even today in our secular societies, our skylines proclaim what we worship. The great centres of finance tower over us and remind us of who we really serve. In Jesus' day, one building captivated the hearts and minds of the Jews, the temple. And with good reason. It was a model of heaven and earth, the meeting place of God and humanity, the dwelling of the Lord's presence, and the disciples are very impressed by it. Mark 13 verse 1. Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Jesus' reply, though, leaves everyone dumbfounded. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. Think for a second of those stunned faces witnessing the twin towers collapsing. Take the shock of that attack and multiply it because Jesus is saying that God's building, God's house, will be rubble. He was predicting Jerusalem's destruction by the Romans in AD 70. Perhaps the very thing that they'd hoped Jesus would save them from. After Jesus speaks, no one can say a word. Maybe for an hour or longer they cross the Kidron Valley, climb the Mount of Olives and look back on the temple. And Jesus needs the disciples to get a bit of distance before he continues with his earth-shattering perspective. In the rest of the chapter he teaches them that God's house is going to be demolished and the rest of the world will follow suit. Judgment always moves from the top down. Judgment begins with the house of God, 1 Peter 4, 17. The stones of the temple will be completely broken apart. But that's just the beginning of things breaking apart. There will be international breakdown, family breakdown, and most shockingly, there will be cosmic breakdown. First the temple will be rubble, but one day this whole tired order of things will be rubble. Both of these events were future for Jesus but he predicted the first one with complete accuracy. A generation, 40 years after his death, the temple was destroyed just as he said. The second part of the prophecy is just as certain. Right now we live in the in-between times and what is it like? Well there are wars and rumours of wars, that's a given. But it's not a sign this is the end. It's a sign that this is the in-between time. This is what it's like to live in a cosmic order scheduled for demolition. Just as the rocks of the temple were blasted apart, so too will relations, so too will realms be scattered. So how should the, res the believer respond? Well, think about those disciples in Mark 13. Jesus had told them the temple was scheduled for demolition. So for the next 40 years, how do you think they then considered the temple? Never again could they be overawed by the building. Never again could they be fooled into thinking it was an eternal refuge. Never again could they view it as a safe house. From then on, they could admire the building. They could use it profitably <coughs> and meet in its courts, but they could never rely on it. Well, it's the same now with this tottering cosmic order. We know that just as Jesus was demolished on the cross and raised up, so the world will be demolished and raised up to something greater. Having been warned, we can now be overawed by this evil age. We can never again think of it as an eternal refuge, as a safe house. When we hear of wars and rumours of wars, we know what age we're in. We're in the in-between times. We've seen the temple topple and we know that this old cosmic order is next. So then we admire the world, we use it profitably and responsibly. 
but we never rely on it. We never make this age our ultimate home. Only the new Jerusalem can provide the security that we crave. When Glenn Scrivener wrote this, um, you know, the wars we, we see and we hear about today, they were not, not raging. And sadly, it seems that the current wars are only getting worse um, by each day. But Glenn Scrivener reminds us here that these things are a reminder of the in-between times. The reminders of our hope that we have in Jesus, that one day we'll be with him and everything will be perfect. And as I read today's chapter, I was reminded of a verse in a song that's based on um, verse on, on Hebrews 6, 19 to 20, um, which says, We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf. And it reminds me of the song, Jesus is King. I'll just read the, the, four, the first four verses of that song. Jesus is King, and I will extol him, give him the glory and honour his name. He reigns on high, enthroned in the heavens. Were thou the Father exalted for us? We have a hope that is steadfast and certain, gone through the curtain, and touching the throne, we have a priest who is there interceding, pouring his grace on our lives day by day. So we thank God today that our hope is in Jesus Christ, the cornerstone of our salvation and our lives. And so what's our response to this today? Well, we know that we have this hope. We know um, from Jesus what's going to happen in the world. We know that we'll one day be with him. And so our, our response, firstly, is that, you know, we can have that peace and assurance of knowing that we have a hope that is steadfast and certain. Then our response should also be to share that with others, to let people know about Jesus and what he has done for them so that they can have the same hope that we have. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.